to my photos because I, I take like four photos of the same thing and I think it's also important to note that I have this tool that helps um, keep the camera angle it's this tool it's what's it called it is called this KTC camera D director it's amazing so what you do is you click the save button you go to whatever like angle you want so let's say I want it like this now I click the save button and then I click zero that's the first position so now when I zoom out and I click zero and I click esc escape it'll go back to that position even if you crash and you log back on it'll save that position for you so definitely a great tool to have I do like four different photos or if it's if I'm photographing a lot of like shiny things, I like to take some without the screen space reflection because, yeah, as you can see, it gets rid of that shiny thing, which I mean, sometimes I want, but sometimes it's too much. So, yeah, you can do that. Um, but usually I just take one photo with the screen space ambient occlusion off and everything goes brighter, everything's, you know, but sometimes I kind of want um, that extra shadow. So I take one photo with, one photo without, and then I go to no shadow, one photo with, and one photo without. And then I go to my fixed environment and I click depth map and I can make I can make a link to this basically it makes the things in the background really light and things in the foreground darker you want to make sure that this is turned off and this is checked off and that it's at no shadows um, make sure that none of these are checked either um, and then you take your picture then you go into Photoshop and now you have your four different photos plus the depth map photo so I'm just gonna let's see first I want to put oop please don't crash please don't crash oh yes okay so I layer these two on each other um, see I don't want it to be too dark I don't want it to be too light so I'm just gonna do a happy medium like right there um, and you don't, I mean, you don't have to do this, but this is just what I like to do. Now I'm going to combine them. Oh, and definitely save. Definitely save. I forgot to mention that. Because I usually forget. I'm just going to do test. Because um, I've, I've, uh, I've actually already started this photo. So, but anyways. So now I have that. And then I'm going to go to my image. Um... I'm going to go to this one, see this one doesn't have it, um, I'm going to put that underneath and now I'm going to use, you can use a masking tool but I'm lazy so I just use the erase tool and you see, oh sorry I got my lazy Nagumi on, so now I can erase that pesky shadow from the window there. Oh, oops. No. Um, yeah, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to do like too detailed here. I just want you to see the options you have. Ta-da! Got rid of that. So it went from, you know, having this annoying shadow to not having it and still keeping all these other shadows. Okay, so now that we got that, I'm going to combine these two layers, make a copy of it, and then get my depth map photo. I'm going to do, okay, this is important, I'm going to do Control L. That's going to bring out levels. I'm going to lower, not, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do anything down here, but up here, I'm going to lower it until these characters, these avatars in the front are like completely black. 
and then I'm going to go to the white one on this side and try to make the ones in the background all white. Um, there we go. And now I'm going to do control A to select all, control C to copy. I'm going to go back here, channels, uh, make new layer. It's going to be called alpha 1. Now you're going to do control V to paste that, control D to deselect, and then you have to click at the top one. Otherwise, if you do this, then it's going to stay like that. So you got to go over here, click the top one. And this is the fun part. You go to filter, blur, lens blur. And um, this one, it automatically goes to alpha one. That was the name of the layer. See how everything's blurry in the background now? Yeah. So you can blur as little as you want if you just want, you know, really subtle blur. Or you can go all the way. Um, make everything super blurry. So now I am going to do my basic settings. Okay, so what I like to do now is do control backspace to make it black. I really like adding lens flare. It's just my thing. I don't, you know, even if there isn't really a lens flare to be had, I still want it. So I make sure it's at screen. I go to filter, render, and lens flare. And what the reason why I do it on a separate layer is because I can adjust this. So let's say I don't want it to be that harsh. You know, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now I can soften the light up there. So, yeah, because, you know, sometimes I just want a softer light. Um, and then I can play with the opacity too, which I couldn't have done if I had done it. Yep, so here we go. And then what I like to do is go to this tr inverted triangle, which is the vibrance tool. Um, I know some of you guys don't have it set up like this. You guys um, have it, you know, with just, you know, the the names of it. You want to go to vibrance. You're going to go to vibrance and then you're not going to touch the saturation because that's just going to make everything uh, yikes, like that. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to touch the vibrance. And that is going to bring back life, bring back color into your photo. Because in, photo, in Black Dragon, it kind of dull things, dulls things out. Um, um, now I'm going to go to this setting. You can play with your brightness. I like to play with the contrast, too. You see? It kind of looks like you dusted off the image. I like to put this in a folder just to be neat. So this is the before, this is the after with just those three simple settings. So yeah, so lens flare, vibrance, and brightness contrast. I love using my dodge and burn tools. Um, I do think I've been using it a little too much lately but I love it. I love it. And I want to put it on a pretty low setting on highlight. When I'm blogging clothes, I like to highlight like wrinkles and stuff. Um, it just makes, especially if it's like on leather or latex, it makes it glow a little bit and like stand out more, which I like. See, just, especially like on curves and stuff. I don't know if you guys can see it through there. Uh, oh, especially on, like, thighs, too. Like. And then, you know, you can brighten up faces. Sometimes I like doing it on cheekbones. Um, and I can provide some brushes for you guys, too. Um, if I want to do, like, little, you know, little pore dots, for the highlight, 
I use this tool, the fairy dust brush. I make it kind of small. Then I go up here to exposure and I bring that up maybe to 70 or something. And I just go in circles. You don't really want to do it in a straight line. There, see? Some natural highlight. If you don't have a pen tool and you want to draw lines, you can go to. Uh, you can click P for pen, or you can go to your pen tool. Yeah, pen tool. And you can outline it. You can outline it. So I'm going to outline this. Oops. Okay, this is this is not going to be the sharpest outline because this is just a quick tutorial, and um, I don't want to, you know, waste anyone's time or anything. Do this. Um, stroke path. Make sure it's set to brush and simulate pressure if you want. Then you're going to go to your brush tool or click B. And um, there we go. You got that. Next time you can just do, um, you can just click enter. With, you can go to your brush tool and click enter. And it'll do the same thing. And then go to click P for pen tool and click enter to clear that and now you have a line uh, for hair I can I'll link some hair brushes too um, but if you don't have a tablet and you want to do hair use your pen tool um, make the you know the path that you want to do let's just say let's just say I want to do something like I don't know, something crazy, like, like that. Okay, that's terrible, but just listen here. Okay, now you want to do the brush tool, B, and you're going to change your brush to a good, like, hairbrush. I can put these in for you guys. I'm just going to use, like, this, and you can change your size. I'm going to change the color to black just for this. And then you press Enter, and now you have... Oh, and then click P. And now you have this, but you can do this with older versions too. I'm sure they have. I'm pretty sure they have it. Um, but if you if you have a tablet, you can just be. And I'll, I'll link these brushes again so you guys can play around with it. These are just brushes I found on DeviantArt too. Um, so you can go up here and adjust your smoothing tool and do this and do the hair. But I don't know why I don't really like that, so I use this other program. And this is so extra, you don't have to do it. It's called Lazy Nazumi. And I have my settings at um, Smoothing Massive, all these things. Um, 25 is the amount. And I like it because there's like this little string that helps guide me while I'm drawing these hairs. I don't know. I like it. I have friends that say you can just use this moving tool, but no, I like this tool. Um, let me put this light back on. So when I see um, a light source, you know, I like to add highlights to my hair in that area. So there's like some light here. I'm going to go back to white make this kind of small and lightly just lightly add some hair highlights you know you want it to be a little more subtle but then it, but also I'm not I'm not like um a pro at hair or anything I'm just more of a simple edit kind of girl And I'm clicking the Control Z a lot. I always have my fingers on the Control Z because I'm always messing up. So yeah, you have it like this. You go to Opacity, and you make it so you can barely see it. And then you just keep layering on top of that. 